we take the time to get that information to the entire community. So Justin, you, if Mayor. you want to start. Sure, thank you, Mayor. We will start with uh, Andrew Freeman from Spectrum News. Andrew. Hi, Mayor, how are you? Um, I was just wondering, as far as you know, uh, Governor Cuomo made some comments today. What are, what are you, um, what are we seeing locally here in Rochester? Do you think um, Rochester is be how badly is Rochester being impacted, especially the minority uh, population of Rochester? I know that this is something that the county executive and I have spoken about for the last week. And today, if they have not released the data yet, they will be releasing it soon. So I won't um, take away from the Commissioner of Health, uh, Michael Mendoza, Dr. Mendoza's uh, report, but we are not seeing at a high rate the level of disparity um, right now. We do believe that if we do not change the social distancing, if we do not stay at home, we will see the level of um, disparities that we see across the country. Uh, there are many reasons as to why this is the case um, going on. But today we are basically on par, a little bit up from uh, where uh, the population, um, the population numbers. But um, we don't see that disparity as much here in Monroe County as we are seeing across the country. But we have to be diligent in changing people's habits and behaviors during this time, or we will. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we'll take our next question from Jane at Channel 13. Jane. Hi. Oh, don't, hold on. Then the Spanish interpreter was going to interpret what I said for the uh, Hispanic community. Okay, go ahead. You have to unmute him. Oh, oh sorry. Sí, la pregunta fue basado en los comentarios que hizo el gobernador Cuomo. Um, y cuál es el impacto a la comunidad de Rochester. Um, so, el impacto no se ha visto un impacto como el que se ha visto en la ciudad de Nueva York, pero sí queremos exhortar a las personas a que continúen um, practicando de uh, maneras seguras, distanciamiento social, para que entonces podamos mantener las tasas um, de incidentes como hasta ahora o reducirlas. Gracias. Next question. Sure. For our next question, we'll move on to Jane from Channel 13. Be addressing the that um, these communities are getting the same care and access to testing. I'm sorry. Can you repeat the question? It came in. Okay. So how can we? Um, how is the city making sure that these communities are getting the same access to care and access to testing? Now that we know the data and um, we are going to work with the county executive, and I know that the deputy county executive, Brenda Crossdell, spoke with our deputy mayor earlier today about making sure that those community health organizations in our community get the test and have access tests where many of the um, African American, Hispanic, Black, and Brown people. Um, have been going uh, to get their health care on a regular basis. They are familiar with these community-based health organizations. And um, so we're going to partner with them. But we also know that currently we don't have enough tests in the community across the board to test everyone. So they will have guidelines as well until we are able to get more tests. And I know that this is something that Dr. Mendoza uh, has been working on. And we want to make sure that we're providing the quality of care that um, all of our community deserves and we save as many lives as possible. Justin, you have to unmute him. So la pregunta fue, ¿cuál está haciendo la alcaldesa para asegurar que hayan pruebas suficientes en la comunidad? Um, ella está trabajando con los diferentes centros comunitarios, organizaciones en la comunidad, al igual que um, clínicas y hospitales, para asegurar que tengamos exámenes suficientes o pruebas suficientes. Pero como sabemos, como ha dicho el doctor Mendoza, estamos trabajando porque sabemos que no hay suficientes pruebas. So estamos tomando los casos por prioridad. Gracias. 
Next question. Good afternoon, Mayor Warren. Patrick Musinak from News 10. Um, underlying health illnesses and lack of medical care has been an issue in these communities. Are you seeing that as a reason why black and brown uh, members of our community are disproportionately affected by this uh, pandemic? So um, absolutely the issue of the underlying health conditions when it comes down to hypertension, diabetes, other obesity and other concerns play into why this uh, can be fatal to people of color. But there is also something that in the beginning of this um, virus outbreak, where there was a message that was given and that was portrayed throughout the community that people still have, and that was that black and brown people cannot catch this, this, this virus. Um, we know from the data that we're receiving from all over the country, looking at what the data that New York City's mayor released today was 70% of African American, Latino, and Asian people being the ones ones that have uh, died from this uh, virus and also in Chicago, Milwaukee, um, and uh, North Carolina and New Orleans, we are seeing that uh, we know that uh, the, the underlying conditions play a factor in this, but also that the message has gotten to our community late when it comes down to social distancing and the message has not necessarily resonated with communities of color. And that is why here in Rochester, we're going to be working uh, diligently with some of our community partners as well as with the County of Monroe to make sure that we're providing the right information and education to the community that we have to protect our circles. We have to protect our family and we have to stay home because if someone with some of these underlying conditions actually contract this virus, the likelihood of them it being fatal to them especially to African-American males, as we're seeing, um, is uh, significantly higher. And that message needs to get out to the community. And we will be doing that over the next couple of days so that we can save as lives as possible. So, al principio pensaba que no se podía contraer este virus en las comunidades de color afroamericana y la latina, pero sabemos que no es la realidad. Um, las personas afroamericanas y latinas también pueden contraer el virus de la misma manera que las demás razas. Um, so, lo que estamos trabajando es mantener la comunidad informada, um, tratar de llevarle la información a tiempo, porque no siempre reciben la información en su idioma. Y eso es lo que estamos tratando de hacer, asegurarnos de que podamos proveer la información, el tratamiento para salvar las vidas y mantener la comunidad segura. Gracias. Next question. Hi, Mayor. Uh, Noel Evans with WXXI News. Um, I am wondering, you had mentioned before about using um, or implementing PPE for um, RPD officers, and I'm wondering where that stands and what other measures uh, that the city is taking. Um, go for it. So the city of Rochester um, from the very beginning of this has um, put out um, a request and implemented PPE requirements across the board uh, for RPD, for our fire department, for DES as well. So we provide masks, we provide gloves, we also provide hand sanitizer as well as um, cleaner for the, the vehicles. Um, of course, many of our employees wanted to clean their own vehicles and they wanted to make sure that once they got into the car uh, that, they, uh, that it was as sanitized as possible from, uh, from user to user. We will continue to provide the necessary PPE. Right now, we have enough PPE for all of um, our employees to utilize um, the, the PPE. Um, one of the things is to make sure that they are utilizing it. You know, I, I did get some concerns from citizens and calls, and I was able to speak with the union president as well as the chief about um, and just making sure or encouraging our officers. We know that they're on the front lines. It's a little bit different to have to put on a mask, to turn on a body camera, to put on glass gloves in order to get out of the car. But we want them to be as safe as possible. We want their families to be safe and our community to be safe as well. 
So, la de ciudad de Rochester está implementando todos los métodos preventivos para que la policía y las personas que responden a las emergencias se mantengan seguras. Se le ha entregado a los empleados o se le ha proporcionado guantes, um, desinfectantes de mano y de superficie. Y lo que queremos seguir exhortando es que, por favor, sabemos que es difícil um, bajarse de el carro, poner todo el equipo, los guantes, las máscaras, desinfectar la superficie, pero queremos exhortar lo que aunque sea difícil, continúen um, siguiendo los métodos preventivos para reducir la contracción de este virus. Brian Sharp with the Democratic Chronicle. Um, hey, Brian, you're you're a little bit low. I can't hear you. Oh, is this better? Um, no. Can you hear me now? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a little bit better. Okay. Um, I was wondering. I, I got. I had some technical difficulties, so I signed on a little late. You said now that we know the data as part of one of your answers. Are are you aware of of what we're seeing locally? Uh, in terms of in communities of color, uh, and can you speak a little bit to, to what you're what you've been made aware of as far as the extent of the concern? So uh, we have spoken with Dr. Mendoza as well as the county executive, and I know that on a call earlier, uh, Dr. Mendoza released some antidotal data. I'm not going to go into the specific numbers because I don't have them in front of me and I'm sure that the county executive and his team will be releasing that information. Um, in a nutshell, we don't see at high level a disparity in uh, the death rate uh, when it comes down to uh, people of color in our community yet. What we do know is that if we do not exercise social distancing as well as stay home, then we will see those numbers increase and we will see what's happening across the country happen right here in Rochester. And that is why we are going to change some of our messaging and really um, push out messaging specifically to communities of color around what has the potential to happen if we don't change our behaviors around this particular virus. Uh, what we do know is that people that are in I, the ICU, that people of color are in the ICU at a higher rate than other folks. And uh, there may be several reasons that that's the case. I'll leave that to uh, Dr. Mendoza to address when he addresses this, this issue. Uh, the largest um, thing that is coming out for me here uh, and, and what we see is that that if don't do something, what is happening across the country will be replicated right here in Monroe County. We can do something about it by working together, by staying home, by protecting our circles. And um, we have to make sure that communities of color get the right message. As I stated earlier, at one point in time, we uh, believed that uh, African-Americans, Latino people of color could not contract this virus. And I think that that myth had permeated the community and people at the time was not taking it as seriously as we should have been. Now we know that actually people of color across this country are dying at alarming rates because of it, especially African-American males. And therefore we need to do something and we need to make sure that we're educating the community properly so that they can have the right information to make the best decision possible for them and their families. Um, ella ha estado manteniéndose en comunicación con el Dr. Mendoza y el ejecutivo del condado de Monroe. Ella va a dejar que el ejecutivo del condado de Monroe se encargue de proporcionar información a más acerca de la pregunta, pero no vemos una tasa mortal más alta en las comunidades de color hasta ahora. Um, lo que sabemos es que si no seguimos las reglas, la tasa de mortalidad puede incrementar como ha pasado en otros estados y en otras ciudades. Lo que sí sabemos es que las personas de color necesitan más tiempo, tratamiento médico y están en las clínicas o en los hospitales por más tiempo. Podemos hacer algo, quedar en las casas y siguiendo las reglas. Um, las personas afroamericanas y los latinos tienen que tomar este virus más en serio y seguir las recomendaciones que están um, la ciudad de Rochester y el doctor Mendoza está proporcionando a la ciudad. 
Gracias. Next question. I just had uh, one follow-up, Mayor. It's just uh, what is happening among the African American community. From the numbers you've seen, is the impact on the Latino community any way to put that in context? If that is of an equal number, um, based on so the rates based on population size are around the same. And so, as I said, we don't see the over alarming, uh, alarming disparity that you see in other communities like what was released today in New York City. But we also have to recognize that we are at the very beginning stages of this virus in our community, uh, whereas this has um, impacted them rapidly. Um, we uh, I know the county executive made a, a point uh, just yesterday on a call that our social distance two weeks ago was um, based was rated at an A based on um, some of the web uh, developers that are that's tracking that data and to date we are now graded at a C and so um, we need to make sure that we continue to exercise the social distancing across the board um, but what we're seeing here with the African American and Latino community is this on track um, uh, with our population size. However, it will get worse based on what we're seeing in the data today, as well as what we're seeing across the country. La pregunta fue, ¿cuál es el impacto entre la comunidad afroamericana en diferencia a la comunidad latina? Um, como ya dije, no vemos una gran diferencia entre la comunidad afroamericana y la comunidad latina del mundo, basado en la cantidad de ciudadanos que tenemos en la ciudad de Rochester, pero sabemos que esto está pasando en otras comunidades donde hay un número o una desproporción más grande. Lo que seguimos exhortando es que sigan las recomendaciones um, de distanciamiento social para que podamos evitar que los números continúen incrementando. In the interest of time, I think we'll take two more questions. I know the mayor has to get to four o'clock. Um, the next question will come from Kayla Green. Hi, um, so you mentioned that you want to um, put out more messaging to communities of color, minority communities, um, to ensure that we can keep social distancing and make sure that they're getting the messaging they need. So in what forms are you planning on getting that messaging out? Like what, what changes are you going to make to what you're already doing? So I know that the, the County uh, Department of Communications will be uh, releasing some um, messaging this weekend. Uh, we will be working with community influencers um, around our community to do a lot of new digital campaigning as soon as they have that available. We will be also um, participating on different radio outlets that uh, communities of color listen to. Um, we will also make sure that we are elevating those community ambassadors, those trusted voices in the community, our ministers, our community members, members of not-for-profit organizations, uh, our healthcare uh, workers and, uh, and, and institutions to make sure that we are delivering that message clearly and in a way that people understand. Um, I, you know, yesterday I was on a call with some uh, local African-American elected officials, and they said, well, you know, it's a double standard. We're saying six, you know, when you go out, have six feet distance between you and the other person. However, um, you, you know, but you're also staying, stay home. And so people feel like, okay, well, if I stayed home all week and I go visit my grandma on, on, on Saturday or over the weekend, that that will be okay because I was home. But the, the fact of the matter is that you can be home and be asymptomatic, but go to your grandmother's house and actually uh, have her contract this virus and she could possibly die from it. And so I think that we have to be very clear about the social gathering, people um, hanging out in their circles. Many people get together, they're having car parties, they may be having sleepovers with children, they may be also going to visit people in their circle and they feel that it's safe because they might have stayed home for a significant period of time. We need to make sure that we're given the message that in this particular case, it can be fatal 
if you are going to visit people, um, especially um, those people people that are elderly, those people that have these underlying conditions, and those people of color in particular that have these underlying conditions. So, la pregunta fue, ¿cuál fue el mensaje? La, la alcaldesa estaba hablando de comunicar a las personas con más, más tiempo, mejor comunicación, especialmente entre las minorías. So, la contestación fue, estaremos trabajando con influenciadores sociales en las comunidades, líderes que las personas en las comunidades afroamericanas latinas confían, um, personas que trabajan en las organizaciones sin fines de lucro y líderes religiosos para asegurarnos que mantengamos a la comunidad comunicada con la información a tiempo. Queremos dejarles saber también que hay personas que piensan que si visitan a sus familiares o las personas que están dentro de su círculo social porque no tienen ningunos síntomas hasta el momento, piensan que es seguro. Pero nuevamente queremos dejarles saber, no es seguro, manténganse en sus casas, practiquen el distanciamiento social, porque aunque no tenga síntomas, el visitar a familiares o exponerse a grupos más de más de 10 personas eh, va en contradicción a todo lo que se le exhorta a la comunidad que haga. Yes, next question. Yeah, hi, Mayor. Um, we know that uh, the barbershops, churches, places like that are health educators in the community. So having had those shut down, you may have lost that opportunity to get a message out. But how, how are different cultures then hearing the message of stay home, stay away? And how are you still going to get those trusted voices when the stylists and the ministers aren't seeing those bunches of people in front of them? So we're going to utilize them in the best way that we know how, and that's through them preparing videos through their, their phone. Um, they, we are going to utilize the, the tools that we have available to deliver those messages. Um, and if we need to do some direct phone dialing and, and a robo dialing to people to, to get that message, um, if we start to see the numbers tick up the way that we possibly believe that it will here, um, we, we will do those types of things. We're going to utilize every message that we can or every bid that we can to deliver the message to the community that we have to do something different here in order to save lives. And I know that this is very, very hard for um, our folks because we're used to gathering, we're used to gathering with our family and our friends. And, but, but we want to tell them that in even that scenario where you know this is your circle, these are your people, that you can actually kill them if not careful. And so it is our responsibility to save each other in this situation. And that message uh, needs to be clearly delivered by trusted ambassadors, whichever way we have possible to deliver those messages. Because our goal in all of this is not just to flatten the curve, it's to actually save lives. La pregunta es cómo otras culturas se pueden mantener comunicados cuando, por ejemplo, los salones de belleza y las iglesias están cerradas, ya que la alcaldesa habló de utilizar líderes religiosos y de la comunidad para proveer la información. So ella dice, estaremos haciendo todo lo posible para que las personas en las diferentes comunidades reciban la información a tiempo, información apropiada. So estarán haciendo videos utilizando a líderes religiosos o comunitarios. Um, si tienen que hacer llamadas robóticas, estarán haciendo todo lo posible para asegurarse de que reciban la información. La meta no es tan solo aplanar la curva del virus, sino asegurarse que estemos salvando vidas. Are there any additional questions? Justin. Hi, Mayor Andrew Freeman from Central News. I, uh, we saw that your uncle passed away from COVID-19. We're so sorry for your loss. Would this be something you feel comfortable addressing? So um, my uncle in, in New York City, um, and he um, contracted this, this virus. He was actually in a, in a home and um, he suffered from, he was uh, differently abled. And um, this has really hurt my grandmother, who's, who's 93 uh, years old, because um, 
we had been trying to get her to move to warmer climate, climate and other things for many years, um, but she remained in New York City um, to be very close to him because of his, um, his abilities and um, her love for him. And so um, having known many families that have suffered a great loss um, with this virus and it is rapidly moving throughout communities and um, people are not given the time to say goodbye. Uh, many families, loved ones are dying by themselves. And, um, you know, um, talking to her last night um, and, and hearing the, the pain in her voice because not knowing if she would even be able to access the body. Um, there is something tragic that is, of course, what the governor has been talking about happening in, in New York City. And many families um, are being impacted, 70% of those families um, being people of color um, and already suffering from impoverished conditions and disparities. And so for, for me, um, having had someone that, you know, you love and a family member that um, lost his life to this virus, um, someone that couldn't defend themselves and um, was, you know, subjected to this because of the, the place that he uh, resided in. I, I can tell you that I appreciate all of our healthcare workers. I appreciate everyone that's putting their lives on the line to, um, to help. Um, and to provide services to all those that are in need right now. The best thing that we all can do to protect our loved ones is to listen to the medical advice that is being given. And that is to stay home, to, if you have to go out, to stay within a six foot distance from the next person, to not gather. Um, when you hear a, a 93 year old woman just say, you know, to you, you know, Andrew's gone. And she said that to me 15 times yesterday, Andrew's gone, Andrew's gone. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to get his body. That um, breaks your heart because there's nothing that I can do to, to help her. And we will all be in this situation given the rapid spread of this virus. Um, when it comes down to the end of this, if we do not listen, what will happen is we will all lose loved one or people in our circle that will suffer and succumb to this disease. And so I'm asking people to listen, to understand that this is not something that we're playing about or joking about. This is something that is taking lives all over this country. We have an obligation to the people that we love, to the people that we care about, to make sure that we do everything possible to save their lives, to go home to our families and make sure that we're delivering that message to every person that we care about because we want them to be on the other side of this. And we can. And that's the one thing that's so very, very important about this. We can make it to the other side of this virus if we do what it takes today to save lives tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. That'll be the end of the press conference. Thank you all for participating.